Hey everybody and welcome back to MTG Killer Bees. This is going to be a slightly different video. Um, I want to keep it short and sweet. I am a gigantic Star Wars fan and I wanted to talk a little bit about my opinions on the rise of Skywalker. Don't worry, there's going to be no spoilers. Um, but I've been seeing tons and tons of mixed reviews. Some people say they really like it, but a ton of critics that I generally trust their opinions on are panning it like crazy which I just don't get so I've had a few of my friends and family ask if they should see it so my quick and dirty is it worth it to see the rise of Skywalker if you really liked the last Jedi and you thought it was really good you will probably dislike the rise of Skywalker if like me you hate The Last Jedi. I thought it was horrible. Almost prequel worthy horrible. If you dislike The Last Jedi, you will probably like The Rise of Skywalker. Okay. So that is my rec recommendation. You can decide if you should see it or not based on that. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the film itself. So, as a lot of people have said, it's rushed, and it is rushed. It, the movie is two and a half hours long, and there's no downtime. There's absolutely no wasted scenes. There's no point in this movie that I would say you can get up and safely go to the bathroom without missing anything. And I lay the blame for that squarely on the shoulders of The Last Jedi, because The Last Jedi made no sense at all and didn't advance the plot almost at all, this had to make up for it and basically cover two movies worth of plot development and then closing the plot. Um, in fact, spoilers for The Last Jedi right here, so if you haven't seen that, turn it off. All right, you still here? Good. At the end of The Last Jedi, Supreme Leader Snoke and Luke Skywalker die. If you took those scenes and put them at the end of The Force Awakens, so if you killed Snoke and Luke Skywalker at the end of Force Awakens, you could skip the rest of The Last Jedi and go right into The Rise of Skywalker. So if you watch The Force Awakens and then somebody told you Luke and Snoke get killed, and then you go watch The Rise of Skywalker, it'll make perfect total sense. Nothing in The Last Jedi has any consequence on this movie. Which, again, Ryan Johnson's fault. I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of stuff about that. Um, the other problems with this movie is, yes, Rey is still a Mary Sue. She was a Mary Sue in the first one. That was not going to change ever. Uh, I don't know what some of these critics were expecting. Like, in the third movie in the series, suddenly they're going to change Rey's character. No. You can dismiss that, because if you didn't like it in The Force Awakens, why the hell did you watch any of the rest of them? I also saw one YouTube critic, who I will not mention... But if you looked up reviews, you probably saw him. Who claims that this is the worst Star Wars movie? And I have one thing to say to that. Misical Jaja Binks! Yeah. Remember that? Misa so smiling to see you, Annie. No, this is not the worst one. It's not even in... Ooh, I would say the top four... Here's, here would be my rankings of the mainline Star Wars movies, episode 1 through 9. So I would say Empire Strikes Back, number 1, obviously. Then Return of the Jedi, A New Hope. And then... that's This is where it gets hard. Because the original trilogy is so good. And everything else has kind of just been feeding off of it forever. So... After those three, let's say, then I'm going to go Force Awakens, just because it's a rehash of A New Hope, and New Hope's so great. Then I would stick 
The Rise of Skywalker. After that, I would put Revenge of the Sith. And then probably Attack of the Clones, then The Last Jedi, then Episode One, The Phantom Menace. Because Phantom Menace is the worst Star Wars movie, period. And if you don't agree with that, you're entitled to your opinion. But I suggest you go watch it again from front to back because it is terrible. I can't even sit through the whole thing anymore. Oh, boy. Anyway, The Rise of Skywalker is not as bad as every, as a lot of these critics are saying. If you're a Star Wars fan, temper your expectations. It's not going to be Empire Strikes Back quality. But go see it. It's worth seeing. It wraps up the series pretty well. It ties up all the loose ends, so you don't have to worry about that. There's no like cliffhangers or anything. And it bring back, brings back my man Palpatine. I love Palpatine so much. He's such a great character, and Ian McDermott plays him so amazingly well. He, you know, I was expecting it to be super stupid that they brought him back, but he's just so great that every time he was on screen, I was just smiling, which was a, a treat for me being a big Palpatine fan. Well, this has already gone on longer than I wanted it to, so those are my quick and dirty thoughts on The Rise of Skywalker, which is in theaters now. I'll see you guys next time. Those are some killer bees.